All right. Hello and welcome to Quantum Fitness, the uh, fitness program that does not work you out. It works you in. Haha. <laughs> Okay, so you guys have had two introduction videos from me. This is so, um, th this program is so easy, but when you're kind of remembering and learning about your body, it can be like, <clears throat> so we have created a forum on Facebook for us to be able to connect and um, and for me to film little videos for you guys just to kind of like keep your heads above water as you're uh, uh, learning to recode your brain and your fight or flight response mechanisms, okay? So we've talked about the initial, um, the initial program itself. And just for catch up, if any of you guys are joining late, this, this, um, this program is completely different than any fitness or health or wellness program that you've had kind of individually. If anything, it's almost like a crash course in, you know, your biochemistry, um, your brain and body connection, your, um, your consciousness, right? Your, your ability to be aware. And there is also a lot of uh, emotional work here that we're going to be doing here. And there's also going to be study of our chemical systems, right? Our hormones are how our brain speaks to our body, you know, and, and really to dive in and first get the theory. I know all of you are like, how do I do this? I need it now. I hear you. Uh, in order for you to do this correctly, all right, you have to know how your body is working both for you and against you. This is very important that you do not like try to run ahead and and before you really understand what is going on biologically, because it's different with all of us, but it's the same pattern, right? We all have a different storyline, different characters, you know, different highs, lows, different issues. But really, at, if we really were going to, you know, be honest with ourselves, we're all going through the same things. You know, I've been doing this for over 10 years and I have clients in 103 countries and it doesn't matter what time of the day I'm talking to them. It's time, relationships, health and money. It's not like rocket science, but for some reason it feels like rocket science. And it may not feel like rocket science when you're helping someone else navigate through those systems, but for ourselves to be able to be aware enough and, and consciousness, uh, conscious enough to actually see and really feel how we are in our own way is about creating space and slowing down so that you can speed up. Because most of you are like, let's go, hurry, hurry, hurry. And you're going to find when we do our emotional work that that time is a big wound for you, which means that there is PTSD associated with time and you, if you're always in a hurry, right? If, you know, I, I am a very fast talker and if I'm not going fast enough for you, I would like for you to be aware that that is maybe something that you need to consider later on when we do our emotional repair. Okay. Now, if I am going too fast for you, right? I would prefer that before each session, because I have a tendency to get right to the point, is for you to do a grounding exercise, make up your own until I can give you one that you will be receiving in this particular workshop. You will get your grounding. And really that's just bringing your energy back, being present. I don't care what you have to do. You know, what color do I see? What do I feel right now? Just be present. Um, if you're going to watch this right before you go to sleep, guaranteed you're going to fall asleep. Uh, because I've been doing hypnosis for so long, my voice can be very hypnotic and I can watch some of you guys pass out right in front of no matter how exciting what I'm saying is right I can see you guys like right now obviously you're getting it because your subconscious is like recording 24 7 no matter what okay and that brings us to our topic for our first class of quantum fitness so the idea of our brain and body and our level of awareness or our consciousness has been 
for a very long time, maybe forever, very separate. Even though we have done yoga to bring ourselves together, we have restructured our diets, you know, we have created physical activities, we have studied different, you know, modalities. I mean, I can't tell you that there's probably not one of you that is on some sort of self realization awareness journey at this point, or you would not have found me. All right. And I have specialized in the past with acute levels of PTSD trauma. Um, and also I, on the, on the flip side of that advanced quantum leaping, right? So what that is, is basically how do I get from here to here? I love, this is like one of my specialties. And I think that's why you're here. Okay. Even though we're going into the body that feels very bleh, slow, sluggish, right? Painful, annoying, feels heavy, maybe feels separated, feels old, feels whatever, fill in the blank. This is actually where all of your magic is. All right. And when you start to study spirituality or wellness or psychology or, you know, kinesiology or metaphysics or quantum physics, it can be very, uh, it can be very uh, experience of feeling very separate. Like, well, what does my body have to do with this? I'm creator. I'm thinking my way there. My thoughts create my reality. Right. And, and that is 100% unfortunately true. Right. But probably none of you know where all of your thoughts are on any given day or any given hour. And just like your subconscious, the universe does not turn off when you are not being serious. Okay. The universe does not turn off when you are just having a bad day or you're in fight or flight or someone's triggering you. It's witnessing 24 seven. Now the universe is giving you a reality based on your potpourri of your experiences, basically who your brain believes you are. Now, is it true that who your brain believes you are is who you are? 100% not because your brain is a is a perceiver. Okay. If you've ever had anybody perceive you, right? It's like judge a book by its cover. They usually were very misguided, right? You could be very beautiful and they uh, see you as, you know, stuck up or hard to reach or whatever. They could see you as very ugly and feel like you have nothing to offer, right? So it doesn't matter the perception what matters is the truth, but your perception of yourself has been built, designed, downloaded, and become that which you always have been, right? It doesn't understand new unless you give new. Now, a lot of us are on a very intense awareness journey, which means that we are studying our, our, um, we're studying our fields, we're studying, you know, we're studying the higher dimensions, we're studying meditation, we're studying Ayurvedics, we're studying yoga, which is, as we're starting to trickle down, it is a very intense brain, body, spirit, you know, connection, but it leaves out something very important. And what all of these practices leave out, not saying they're perfect in their own right, in their own way, but what they leave out is this subjective perception of who we are not, right? So when you take a quiz based on, you know, your moon sign or this sign or, you know, your body type, then you are literally reading lab work. Okay. And when you read lab work, it's going to give you a result, which means that you're going to fit in some category, you know, PITA, it, you know, you're going to, you're going to find yourself, well, you know, my blood types this, so I got to eat this. And, and this is what screws up everyone because you are not just that, right? You are also not that. And this is the confusing part. Because when you're looking at who you believe you are, you're looking through a conscious focus of yourself. There are four elements of consciousness that you have to consider when you're working on who you are, right? So there's a lot of who you are and there's a lot of not who you are happening in the brain. All right. So let's just 
for, you know, for our understanding, there's four levels of consciousness. So there is super consciousness. All right. And this part of consciousness or information or awareness can be perceived through your human brain, right? There is different parts of your brain that can stream just like Wi-Fi, all right, can stream higher levels of consciousness. Okay. This is found in your pineal gland. This is found, or they would say crown chakra. And this is also found in your frontal cortex or third eye, right? So these two live streamers can connect to higher levels of you, aka universe, right? So those are very powerful ways to connect. Okay. And we're usually f connecting to the crown, surrounding ourselves with purple energy during meditation. Okay. Now this is higher level you. Okay. Now there is a lower level you drop down below super conscious is conscious. Now conscious is who you believe you are. All right. Super consciousness is all that you are. Drop down one conscious who you believe you are, which is why you get so blindsided when people are like seeing or you are reading you differently. You're like, what? And now conscious is very misrepresentation of you because you only have about 5% of your, of your awareness in your consciousness, in your conscious awareness, which means it's kind of a summary. Like if you were going to tell a really long story and someone's like, get to the point, tell me the summary, you would have to leave out so much, the backstory, the characters, you'd have to just sum up in 5% of a hundred percent story, what and who you are. This is your conscious. Now, unfortunately, this is who you believe yourself to be most of the time, right? Because you're conscious. Okay. But below big sub, which means below, there is a subconscious. Okay. There is an awareness of you that is below your own ability to see or know on any given, uh, present moment or, um, you know, direct understanding. Okay. The subconscious is all that you have been. Okay. So we have all that you are, all that you believe you are, all that you have been. All right. Now there's one more. And this one gets people very confused if they do not study epigenetics. So this, this last and final one is what we call unconscious. Now unconscious is going to be all that you have come from. Okay. All that you are, all that you believe yourself are, your subconscious, which is all of who you were, who you were, Okay. And then below that, all that you have ever been below as far as bloodline, heritage, gender choicing, all of these things. So your genetic coding at its most at basic dimension of, you know, very like very um, lower dimensional awareness of code. Okay. So this is your coding. Okay. So obviously you start with your coding, right? And, and then you start with your coding and you start with your super consciousness. So you, you are created in your mother's womb from your original coding, which is your bloodline, your genetics, your, your DNA, you know, your heritage, your family tree, right? And then you have your super consciousness that embodies the lowest level of a consciousness, which is like a primal creation of body. All right. Now the two consciousnesses in between is what gives you a physical representation of who you believe you are. But in order for us to really become quantum fit, we have to take into consideration that there are four levels that we are always playing with, regardless if we think we're just conscious or not, because a lot of the times when, well, every time, you are triggered, you are in judgment, you are confused, you are worried, you are afraid, you are in your 
unconscious and subconscious, right? You are not you, right? Because you, superconscious, I'm everything, I'm all that I, I am the universe, right? It knows that. So if you were in that level of consciousness, you would not be worried about what was going on here. So we have to take in consideration that a lot of times that we go on a, you know, personal development journey, a spiritual development journey, a wellness journey, a self-realization journey, and we do not take into consideration the sub and unconscious awareness of self or the sub and unconscious mindset, which is when we say mind, we could say kind of like a database, right? We could say like, like your Google or your YouTube, this everything is stored in there and just right there. Okay. So a lot of times we will spiritually bypass this thing. Now, as we look at consciousness, we have higher levels of consciousness and we have lower levels of consciousness and higher is lighter. Okay. Lighten up enlightenment. Okay. Now the, the heavier we get, the more unconscious, the more of the scuba diving effect into the abyss is the unconscious part of you, right? That is just codes and it's, it's just programs. Okay. So if I'm just programs down here and I am the code writer and I am the programmer up here, my journey is actually to move into the center point, utilizing both my conscious ability to behave and my subconscious ability to focus, to integrate the highest point of myself and the lowest point of myself into self-realization, right? Master, teacher, guide, powerful manifestations, abundance, freedom, right? So this quantum fitness is really, instead of how do I get from here to here, it's how do I get from here to here and bring it into a center point here? Because your heart is really going to be your center point in this model, right? Now we can't disregard this. You're like, I know this dress or, oh, I didn't know this dress. doesn't matter. This is part of your work. You know, when people say, I know that, I know that, I say, okay, then you should be living this. This is how wisdom is. I don't care how much knowledge you have. If you are not living a life of forward motion, joy, ecstasy, expansion, relationships, you only know this in a analytical way. Your body does not know how to live this. And this is my gift to you is your body living all that you know. Okay. Now the parts of you that you don't know is what we're going to find here because there are parts of you that you don't know, or you have hidden or you have blocked away or you have changed, disassociated, you know, become the chameleon to fit in. Now let's look at that word fit. And then let's look at fitness. Is it fitness is the, the, the ness of fitting, right? Because you never came here to fit, right? You actually came to be more of a glitch, you know, to break down the old paradigm, but that's another workshop, right? You came to be you, all that you could be. Every ounce of potential that is in your super consciousness is fully accessible for you to live here in physical reality. Now, most of you have only felt that connection through sessions, through healing work, through meditation, through, you know, service. But have you been able to find and feel that during a trigger? Have you been able to feel that in your body when you are confused or alone or you just lost something? Because if you cannot, then you're going to live what's called a double life. And it's going to feel like 10 steps forward, 10 steps back. Because density, it weighs something, right? Lower consciousness actually has a depth. 
It has a weight, right? Now, super consciousness is weightless. So if you are manifesting the weight, like, oh, hurry up, or the weight, it doesn't matter which metaphor your brain is perceiving that is the best representation of the character that it believes you are, right? So your brain is actually fully responsible for judging you, okay? And when it's judging you, it's deciding for you what you need and what you want. Okay, now when I say brain, you're like, wait, didn't you say this is super consciousness? So in your brain is obviously is kind of like the central commands system, your hard drive of your biological body. All right. It was constructed to be a expansive learning computer with use and awareness. Right. They say 10% humans use 10% of the brain because most of us are studying super consciousness and living unconsciousness. So the brain stays separated from its potential. Right. So when we fantasize, we're using our frontal cortex or we are using our, you know, our ability to, to perceive something new. Okay, so we're accessing, but then we're not doing, right? Because I'm stuck or I'm blocked or I'm waiting or there's no help over there or this person doesn't understand me or I have no money, right? So then it becomes just a fantasy. So it stays very compartmentalized in your brain, right? Now there's another part of your brain that is designed at a very primal stage to to react, react. Okay. What is that? Let's break. I love breaking down words. Let's look at that word react. So if I am reacting, re means to do again, act means to pretend, right? So react actually is not like I just reacted and it was boom. No reaction comes from the subconscious autopilot. Programs that are already pre-built or have been designed and built by you from pain and trauma, okay? So if things happen in your life, you will create subconscious um, reactions. You know, the psychological world calls this PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. What I like to call it is post-trauma resurrected. Okay. Because that's actually what's happening now because you're so separated from yourself in your levels of consciousness, because it feels so good to study this, you know, higher levels of being. And it feels so heavy trying to bring that over here that we just go back and forth right? Oh, I can't wait to meditate or, oh, I cannot wait till I'm around these group of people where I've, I'm thriving or I can't wait for the vacation where I can just be myself or I can't wait. You see how I've said wait so many times, right? Um, or I have to wait. It's not my time yet. Divine timing. And in, in our culture, we call it, you know, spiritual bypassing when you are kind of like, allowing yourself to be victimized and perpetrated by your environment. It's like, it's supposed to happen, right? Um, I said, well, yeah, it's supposed to happen because you've got a program playing, but you are also a code writer. I mean, you've got pre-recorded programs. We say these are our limits and these are our potentials, right? Our job is to bring ourselves into limitless potential.